Good morning. Welcome to another session. So our topic for today is more on IT infrastructure and emerging technologies. So our objectives for this session, after this session, uh, you will be able to answer the following questions. What is IT infrastructure and what are the stages and drivers of IT infrastructure evolution? Second, what are the components of IT infrastructure? Third, what are the current trends in computer hardware and software platforms? And lastly, what are the challenges of managing IT infrastructure? So to begin our discussion, I think uh, I have two questions here for you. Why do you think selecting computer hardware and software for the organization, an important management decision. Second, what management and technology issues should be considered when selecting computer hardware and software? In your notes, maybe you can try to answer those questions. Now, the question that we, we normally ask ourselves is, what is the real business value of a computer that costs about $1,000? To answer that question, I think it's important for us to realize what are the applications that are installed in this uh, computer and where do your employees use them for? Okay, um, you will be surprised if you will check the computer of each employee that was assigned to him or her. Uh, more likely, it's probable that uh, many of the files stored in those computers maybe are not work-related. So if that is the case, why do we buy very expensive, sophisticated computers for your staff, all right? So I think it's, it's very important that policies should be in place with regards to the use of computers in the office. So let's go back to the question. What is the real business value of a computer that costs about $1,000? Again, it depends on the applications, okay, that are installed in that computer, okay? So if, the say receptionist uh, computer is only used for scheduling you know booking clients why do you have to buy very expensive computers so again the decision on how much what kind of computers we're going to buy will depend on the kind of applications that will be installed in those computers so, what is IT infrastructure? So, IT infrastructure is defined as it's the shared technology resources that provide the platform for the company's specific information system applications. So, what we are saying here is even before we can uh, use these uh, information system applications uh, that can be used in uh, decision making and in controlling the operation of the company, we need to have IT infrastructure first. So it includes investment in hardware, software, and services such as consulting, education, and training. So the services a firm is capable of providing to its customers and suppliers and employees are a direct functions of its IT infrastructure. Ideally, this infrastructure should support the company's businesses and information systems strategy. So new information technologies have a powerful impact on business and IT strategies as well as the services that can be provided to customers as we have already learned and discussed in the past. So, the following uh, is the evolution of IT infrastructure. So from 1959 to present, uh, there is an emergence of mainframe, 
So these are powerful operating systems that could provide time sharing, multitasking, and virtual memory. It also is capable and able to support thousands of online remote terminals and very highly centralized computing. Now, why do you think even if they are very old, you know, computers, they are still being used at the present? Many things. Maybe because of its capabilities. Yes, they are very useful until now. But also it's because of the cost that were invested, okay? in this uh, mainframe computers, okay? So the companies uh, spent or invested millions of dollars uh, in the mainframe. So sometimes it's very difficult to just uh, abandon and let go of these computers. Uh, so from 1959 to present, we have mainframe. And then from 1981 to present, we have uh, personal computers until now. And then from 1983 to present, we have client-server uh, computers. And then from 1992 until the present, we still have enterprise computing. Okay, so we have an enterprise server. Okay, we are able to connect to the internet. And then uh, these uh, terminals are able to connect to the enterprise server. Okay, and then now from year 2000 to the present, we saw the emergence of cloud computing and mobile computing. So what are the different technology drivers of infrastructure evolution? Uh, the first is, of course, as we have already discussed, Morse law and microprocessing power. According to this law, the power of microprocessors double every 18 months, or it could be even shorter today. And then computing power doubles every 18 months as well. So the price of computing falls by half every 18 months. So if you notice, even in terms of mobile phones or smartphones, okay? So suppose you have an iPhone 10 and then we have iPhone 11. So after 18 months, if you notice, the price of iPhone 10 is almost half the price of iPhone 11, okay? It has dramatically depreciated. Next is the law of mass digital storage. So the world produces as much as 5 to 7 exabytes of unique information every two days. This is according to Eric Smith, who is the former CEO of Google. Okay, uh, it, even, it could even be less than two days already. So what is an exabyte? An exabyte is a billion of gigabytes. So fortunately, the cost of storing digital information is falling at an exponential rate. In fact, today, even in our emails, we seldom delete emails already. Why? We have enough storage already. Now, we are approaching the zettabyte era, okay? And one zettabyte is approximately equal to a thousand of exabytes or a billion of terabytes, okay? The next driver of technology evolution is what we call as Met Metcalfe's law and network economics. So the network effect originally conceived as a way to sell more Ethernet cards. Metcalfe's law postulates that the value of a network is proportional to the square of the number of the users. In this essay, the author wonders whether his law applies to other networks. Okay, so just like Safaricom, for example, uh, the more members in the Safaricom network, the higher the value of that network. That is simply Metcalfe's law. Okay? Again, the value or power of a network grows exponentially as a function of the number of network members. Okay? Yeah, including uh, eBay, for example. The more people doing uh, auction, buying and selling at eBay, you know, the higher the bigger the value of that network, okay? So the value of an entire system grows exponentially and continues to grow forever as member increases. So demand for information technology has been driven by the social and business value of digital networks, which rapidly multiply the number of actual and potential links among network members.
okay there was a time that uh, when uh, YouTube was still very young you know uh, Google bought YouTube because there are millions and millions of uh, videos that are being watched every day so means to say there's a growing number of people okay engage or viewing visiting this network okay next is declining communication costs and the internet so in 2017 it is estimated that three and a half billion people worldwide now have internet access so maybe now we can assume 2020 we can assume that there are about four billion people already as communication costs fall toward a very small number and approach zero, utilization of communication and computing facilities explode. All right? Say, for example, uh, it's very possible for us to communicate via the internet, all right? Through voice calls, okay? And so on, okay? As compared to you use your mobile phone in calling, you know, you use your credit, all right? Standards and network effects, so compatibility of products and ability to communicate in a network. So these technology standards unleash powerful economies of scale and result in price declines as manufacturers focus on a single standard. Okay, so uh, although there are some companies who are not following standards, they have their own standards. Say for example, Apple, okay, uh, but many manufacturers, okay, manufacturers and uh, producers, developers of systems and hardwares, okay, they follow certain standards, okay? So the interoperability, the, you know, the integration of these systems, okay, they unleash powerful economies of scale, okay, and result in price declines as manufacturers focus on single standard. So what are the different infrastructure components? So, we talk about computer hardware, operating systems, enterprise applications, networking. We have consultations and data management and internet platforms. So let's talk about computer hardware first. So include client machines, server machines, as well as modern mainframes produced by IBM. So we also see now blade servers. These are ultra thin servers intended for a single dedicated application and are mounted in space-saving racks, okay? So these are much smaller than, you know, mainframes and other supercomputers, okay? So the companies worldwide spend about $800 billion approximately on computer hardware devices. It's a huge industry. Next is operating system platforms. Include platforms for client computers, dominated by Windows, of course, and servers dominated by Unix and Linux. So operating systems are software that manage the resources and activities of the computer and act as an interface for the user. So Google's Chrome operating system for cloud computing. Android is an open source operating system for mobile devices. iOS is the operating system for Apple products. The next component of IT infrastructure is, of course, we have enterprise software applications. So this enterprise and other software applications include SAP, Oracle, PeopleSoft, Navision, okay, and other middleware software that are used to link uh, a company's existing application systems, okay. So it actually integrates okay, many different functions like uh, HR, manufacturing, uh sales okay and customer service and finance okay so these are enterprise uh, applications so companies worldwide spend about 400 billion on software for enterprise applications again it's a big industry Data management and storage is handled by database management software and storage devices include traditional storage methods such as these arrays and tape libraries 
and newer network-based storage technologies such as storage area networks or SANS. Okay? SANS connect multiple storage devices on dedicated high-speed networks. So this data management storage enterprise database management software is responsible for organizing and managing the company's data so that they can be efficiently accessed and used and managed. Okay? So leading database software vendors are IBM, DB2, we have Oracle, we have Microsoft SQL Server, and Seabase. And there is an open source database management storage, MySQL. Another IT infrastructure component is networking and telecommunication platforms. So networking and telecommunications platforms include Windows, server operating systems, Novell, Linux, and Unix. Okay, Nearly all local area networks and many wide area networks use the TCP IP standards for networking. Companies worldwide spent $1.85 trillion on software for enterprise uh, uh, networking and telecommunication platforms. So leading networking hardware providers are Cisco, Alcatel Lucent, and Juniper Networks. The most famous one is, of course, Cisco. Next, internet uh, platforms. So internet platforms overlap with and must relate to the company's general networking infrastructure and hardware and software platforms. So internet-related infrastructure includes the hardware, software, and services to maintain your websites, your intranets, and your extranets, including web hosting services and web software application development tools. So internet platform, uh, web hosting service maintains a large web server and provides fee-paying subscribers with space to maintain their websites. So globally, companies spend about $60 billion on internet-related infrastructure. Not bad. Next is consulting and system integration services. So integrating a company's legacy systems with new technology infrastructure and providing expertise in implementing new infrastructure along with relevant changes in business processes, training, and software integration. So large companies do not have the staff, the skills, the budget, or the necessary experience to do so. Therefore, they would prefer going to a consulting company and an integration system integration company. So implementing new infrastructure requires significant changes in business processes and procedures, training and education, and software integration. So leading consulting companies providing these services and this expertise include Accenture, IBM Global Services, HP Technology Solutions, Infosys, and many other companies. There are some contemporary hardware platform trends that we are seeing today. Of course, we see the mobile digital platforms include tablet computers, smartphones, and table computers are becoming an important means of accessing the, the Internet. We also see consumeration of IT and BYOD. So BYOD is one aspect of the consumerization of IT in which new IT that first emerges in the consumer market spreads into the business organization. BYOD stands for bring your own device. Example, mobile personal devices including Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, etc. So uh, forcing businesses to rethink the way they obtain and manage IT equipment and services. It is important that companies must have existing policies or in place with regards to BYOD, okay, uh, practice. Next is virtualization. Server virtualization is a common method of reducing technology costs by providing the ability to host multiple systems on a single physical machine. So a server or a mainframe can be configured to run many instances of an operating system so that it acts like many different machines and then can run you know, different applications at the same time. 
Another trend is the open source software. So open source software is software produced by a community of several hundred thousand programmers around the world. So open source is free and can be modified by users. Most often, uh, open source software are based on Unix or Linux. Like Strathmore University, for example, is an open uh, open uh, source uh, advocate and avid fan. So in fact, many of the applications that are being used at Strathmore are open source okay so our academic management system is open source our library system is open source our e-learning is open source okay our uh, finance system is open source and then even our customer relationship management system is open source Cloud computing is a model of computing in which computer processing storage and other services are provided as a pool of virtualized resources over a network, primarily the internet. So can be accessed on uh, an as-needed basis from any connected device and location. So it could come or consist of three different types. We can see we are seeing now infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. Now. Uh, you can rent out this infrastructure, this platform, this software, and then uh, pay only depending on your needs. So this is one way of reducing our costs in terms of uh, capital expenditure. Uh, capital expenditure when you buy your own uh, ser the data server, okay, and many other infrastructures, okay, uh, those are capital expenditures. Whereas cloud computing is more of operational expenditure. So there are management issues regarding IT infrastructure. First is platform and infrastructure change. And second is management and governance. And three, making wise infrastructure investment. So what, some of the issues that we need to consider in infrastructure change is uh, or investment is a scalability okay so a scalability refers to the ability of a computer product or system to expand to serve a large number of users without breaking down so for example uh, if we invest in it infrastructure in 2020 how sure are we that in the next five years the same infrastructure will not uh, break down even though we might have uh, expanded our number of customers have already grown okay number of products and services have also expanded so new applications mergers and acquisitions and changes in business volume all impact computer workload and must be considered when planning hardware capacity right so these are the issues that we are talking okay so in terms of equity bank in the case so they started with only 30 branches suppose they're going to open say 100 branches or they're going to acquire other companies or they're going to expand in other countries so these are the issues that we are uh, trying to consider here management and governance who will control and manage the company's IT infrastructure so should departments and divisions have the responsibility of making their own IT decisions? Or should IT infrastructure be centrally controlled and managed? Okay, so and how will costs, how will infrastructure costs be allocated among business units? So these are some of the management and government issues, governance issues rather, all right? So there could be issue in terms of responsiveness, speed in decision making. Well, you might want to decide uh, departments and divisions to have that, you know, have that responsibility in making their own IT decisions. On the contrary, uh, the argument of having a centrally controlled and managed IT infrastructure is, of course, now uh, uh, integration, you know, and then. Uh, uh, how they call this one um, uniformity of systems okay standards 
okay, and so on. So how will infrastructure costs be allocated among business units? So you, you can have a, uh, you know, IT now or information system delivery department wherein now, so IT now is a what? A support service that is common to everybody. Okay, so now maybe you can charge departments according to the number of users and the number of usage and of course maybe the number of applications, you know, supporting a particular department. Now the next question is how do we make wise infrastructure investments? So the one million and one question is how much should the company spend on infrastructure? Well, there's a model that we can use to answer this question all right so the biggest risks by the way in uh, uh, infrastructure investments is overspending so there is a model that we can use for infrastructure investment and we want to call it the competitive forces model so to answer the question how much are we going to spend well first and foremost we can benchmark okay we can look at the our competitors uh, services okay and and products okay if we cannot offer the same products and services then by all means we have to invest we look at competitors IT infrastructure investment as well so for the for the in the case of equity bank if they have 30 branches at that time they they look for a similar bank with the equal number of branches and uh, and see how much that competitor has already invested in their IT infrastructure Number three, we can look at the market demand for the company's products and services. So in the case of Equity Bank, if we, you know, we see in the video uh, the long line of clients wanting to avail of their products and services, okay? And if there are any opportunities that we are not able to pursue because our system is unable to support it, then by all means, we need to invest in IT infrastructure. The next is your company's business strategy. So in the case of Equity Bank, again, okay, they are planning to, to penetrate the continent of Africa. So that's the objective. Okay, that's the vision. Then by all means, they have to invest in IT infrastructure. Again, the IT strategy, if we go back to our previous discussions, okay, what is the IT strategy? Well, they're going to rely so much on IT for them to achieve their business strategy. They're going to rely so much on IT, you know, in, in terms of their operations. Then by all means, they have to invest in IT infrastructure. And lastly, of course, the IT assessment. Remember what we discussed last time. You know, sometimes the kind of activities, the kind of things that we, want, that we wanted to do in the next five years depend on the kind of systems that are in place in the organization. So if based on our IT assessment, we are unable to achieve our business strategy. We are not able to meet the large demand for our products and services. We are unable to match the IT infrastructure of our competitors. We are unable to produce okay, or to provide the same quality services as compared to our competitors. Then by all means, we need to invest in IT infrastructure. Now, there is another issue in, uh, in IT infrastructure. We call it the total cost of ownership. Remember the components, the elements of IT infrastructure? So when we are preparing budget for our IT infrastructure, we are not only uh, uh, budgeting for the cost of the software. There are, as we have learned in, uh, in the previous slides, there are many other costs. That will be that will add up to the total cost of ownership of IT infrastructure. Okay, that can include the original cost of acquiring, installing the hardware and the software, and then ongoing uh, ongoing administration costs. We need to budget also for upgrades, for maintenance, for technical support, for training, for utility and estate costs, for running and housing IT. If we are to buy our own data center and our servers, etc., they have to be air conditioned, well protected. Okay, and then of course we have also to allocate budget for downtime. 
So next is how do we optimize return from IT investments? So many things. One is uh, organizational assets. Okay, so these are the different assets required to optimize returns from IT investments. IT alone will not give us value. We have to put in place organizational assets. Okay, one of them, of course, we need to have supportive organizational culture that values efficiency and effectiveness. It must be in place. So everybody, but everybody in the organization must have that culture wherein we value efficiency and effectiveness. Then our IT investments will be optimized, okay, in terms of return. Number two, as we have already learned in the past, okay, appropriate business model. Okay, so a business model includes what? Uh, we have a very good value proposition. Okay, we have a, a very good profit formula. We have the resources. And of course, we have efficient processes. And lastly, of course, we need to have strong IT team. Why? Because IT do break down. Okay, and, and if IT break da breaks down, then uh, people are unable to to utilize, you know, in, in uh, you know, maximize the utilization of IT. So therefore, we must have a strong IT team to be able to support our user community. Another asset is managerial assets. Okay, first, we must have strong senior management support for technology investment and change. Uh, so as we have seen in the uh, equity bank case, we saw the CEO, James Mwangi, who is very much involved okay, and very supportive in terms of technology investment and change. We saw this also in uh, Otis Elevator case. All right. Next is incentives for management innovation. All right. It's very important that now that we have invested in high-tech, sophisticated, advanced IT infrastructure, it's very important that we use now this infrastructure for innovation. Okay, And people will only innovate if we provide incentives. Training programs to enhance management decision skills. Remember, we have now access to a huge amount of data, and then this data now can be converted into a meaningful, meaningful form, which we call now information, and this information now can be used for decision making. All right, so managers must be comfortable in using data, in using information for their decision making activities. So, discussion should the company purchase its own IT infrastructure components or rent them from external suppliers? So to be able to answer this question, you have to do a little research. Thank you.